Come on, let's all stand up and give God some praise. There you go. Hallelujah. Come on, glory be to God. <laughs> Who always causes you to triumph in Christ Jesus. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and you're not beneath. Glory to Dios. Te alabamos. Te amamos Dios. Come on, glory be to God. Raise your hands and just praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Let the Lord be magnified and his enemies be scattered. Amen. Man. Awesome, awesome. I can feel the... Uh, the goodness of God, the, the blessing of God in this place, the glory of God, you know. A lot of people use the word energy. Oh, there's good energy. I've been told that by people. Oh, you have real good energy. Uh, no, I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. Amen. <laughs> you guys have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he of this world. Amen. Uh, I see the excitement in your ladies' faces, the glow upon you guys. Amen, a little change, amen. <laughs> some, of, some of you left sad, but now you're glad, amen. <laughs> you're glad you went after all, right? Uh, I love that, you know, when there, there's a battle going on before you go to the mountain. You're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to go. You know, the kids are acting up. My husband, you know, gained 10 pounds and this and that or whatever. <laughs> whatever, the excuse, whatever the excuse is, is, you know. But that's the challenge. You know, when, when that's happening, you know there's something up there for you. Because the enemy is trying to hold you back from, from, getting, from getting up to the, uh, to the mountain. Amen. A veces tenemos una batalla antes que llegar a la montaña. Y cuando eso pasa, sabemos que estamos en el lugar donde debemos estar. Porque hay una batalla, hay una lucha. If, if you're not having a battle, if you're not wrestling against something, then you're a bench warmer. You're a bench warmer. You're not in the game. You're not in the game. You got to be in the game. I'm in a fight all the time. If I could tell you guys my fights, you know. Uh, but we just keep on going. We take a lick and we keep on ticking, baby, and we overcome in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm excited for you ladies. I'm excited what God has done. Uh, I want you to hold on to what God has done. Don't, don't, don't let it go. Don't let it go. Amen. You know, uh, the world down from the mountain remains the same. You know, there's still problems. There's still situations. You're still married. Still financial troubles. All that's still here. But you're changed now. You're different now. Right? You're a different person. You're looking at it different. You're thinking about it different now. You know, don't go back to the old mode. Because the enemy's going to try to bring you right back into that old mode that you were. Don't do it. No, no, in Jesus' name. It's not going to happen no more. I'm living a new life. Amen. I went to the mountain. I see the transfiguration. I seen the glory of God, the light of God. I'm different now. You know, and you men don't. Don't throw no wet blankets on their anointing. Oh, now we holy. Oh, yeah, now you think you're all that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, amen. Don't, don't ever, as a believer, uh, I taught this many, many years ago. As a believer, don't be the one that causes somebody to stumble. Because it's better for you to tie a, a stone around your neck and jump in the lake. The Bible says, you know, so don't be the one. That was the name of the message. I will not be the one. You know, don't ever allow yourself to be used by the enemy to put your wife down or your husband down. You're a team. Work together. Amen. Be a blessing to one another. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy for every one of you ladies that, that went up there, uh, you young ladies, that uh, next year hopefully... You can go up there, start saving your money. Don't wait for mom or daddy to pay your way. You, you start putting five bucks away in a jar, 50 cents away. At the end of the year, I, I have two jars I fill by the end of the year. You'll have enough to go. You'll have enough or you'll be real close that, all right, pops or mom can kick in 40, 50 bucks. But you know what? You're paying your own way and you'll feel better about it. Amen. 
So I just uh, uh, want to encourage you guys. The secret my uh, pastor told me many, many years ago about getting to the top. The secret is not getting to the top. The secret is staying at the top. And how you stay at the top is the same way you did it all weekend. See how you went to service three times in one day? Friday night you were wor uh, wor uh, worshiping. Instead of going to go eat pizza and all that, let me get my worship on for about 20, 30 minutes, fellas, and I'll be back. Amen? Uh, uh, let me go sat uh, Saturday morning, uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Let me go get some worship on. Let me go get in my word. You got to keep it. It's a discipline. Amen? And it's a beautiful discipline, you know. Uh, I can see it. Look at Sophia, all different back there, you know. All different. Look at the face. Amen? You can see that, you know. You know, look at Steph right here in front of me, man. I came in dancing and stuff. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. That, that, amen. That, that brings me joy as the, as the father of the house, as the pastor of the house. That brings me joy to see the ladies uh, exuberant and <laughs> look at Caroline, they're just smiling right there. It ain't because of you either, Anthony, amen. <laughs> Because of Jesus. Because <laughs> of Jesus. You, you have something to do with it, though, brother. Amen. Hey, you ladies uh, uh, wanted to be away from your man. You couldn't wait to get home to your man. Huh. <laughs> I want to get home to my, my daddy. Or you guys call him daddy? Oh, man. Sarah did. Sarah called him Lord, amen? So ladies, you're supposed to be calling him Lord, amen? Okay, don't let that, don't, don't let that pride, don't let that pride come in, man, amen? Lord, oh, man. Let's go back to the mountain for another three days, amen? <laughs> They'll come back saying, Lord. <laughs> Just having fun with you ladies, but... Uh, uh, you're to honor your husbands. That's what the Bible says in uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Honor your husbands. Respect them. And uh, husbands, love your wives. That's what it says. If you love your wife, uh, show, amen. <laughs> if, you love, if you love your wife, she'll honor you. And if you respect your husband, he'll love you. And it takes time to do that. You know, it takes time. Uh, uh, we lose that touching of the hands. We lose that uh, caressing, that arm around the shoulders or that sitting next to each other, you know. When's the last time you sat next to your husband and watched a movie? All right, let's keep going in Jesus' name. <laughs> we're going to bless the Lord. Uh, uh, I'm going to have a word for about 20, 30 minutes, and then we're going to uh, hand this over to Bobby Joe, and Bobby Joe will uh, call out for... Uh, uh, testimonies. Testimonies are A, B, C. Accurate, brief, and Christ-centered. Accurate, brief, and Christ-centered. Don't preach to nobody. I, if you preach, I'm going to stand up. If you start preaching, I'm going to stand up and you're going to know you're preaching. Amen. I want to know what the Lord did to you. I, I want to know what the Lord did to you. I want to know what the Lord did to you. What the Lord did to you. I want to know what the Lord did to you. You know, what the Lord did to you, and not, not to me, to you. Be, you gotta, but you got to be transparent and you got to be honest. That's the only way you're going to get well and you're going to be healed. You know, go up there. I, I went up there and I was hurting. Not because of nobody else, because of my own disobedience. And I let go of whatever you had to let go of. Lying, manipulation, cheating, whatever it was. You know, I let it go. <clears throat> and you got, you got made whole by the... By the power of God. Amen. Amen. We're, we're gonna, this church is, we get real. This church is not an ordinary church. We're not just going to do our 30 minutes of preaching and three songs and then kumbaya, we go home and everything like that. We don't. We're, we're a spirit-filled church. And I want the spirit of God to move and have his way in our lives. Amen. In all our lives. I preach the truth. I live the truth in front of you guys, you know, best of my ability and the strongest of my ability that God has given me. I, I, I live an honorable life before you guys that you guys could uh, be blessed and stuff like that. I know I'm being judged right now by people. Uh, it's all right. 
That's all right. It's all right. Uh, you guys can judge me. You guys can look at me all you want and say things about me. It's all right. It's glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to live for God. Amen. I'm going to bless God. I'm going to honor God uh, no matter what goes on. I was here before you got here, and I'm going to be here after you leave. If you decide to leave, I'm going to be here. You can come Monday through Friday, and you'll catch pastor right here. You'll catch him at church all the time, unless I ask for a day off, you know, that I need a day off. And that's happened about once or twice this last four months that I took a day off, you know. But it's not a day off because phone calls still come in, you know. So and those phone calls last 30 to 40 minutes to an hour. I was on the phone for an hour and 48 minutes with one person. And whew, I'm like, man, that brother's lonely, <laughs> you know. There's, there's lonely people out there, amen. Even if you got a partner, you can still be lonely, you know. You don't have to be by yourself to be lonely. Some of you guys live your own lives, and we got to live together now. Ladies, you got it, right? You got it. You got it. Love your husbands, amen. Honor your husbands. Husbands do the same. Honor them and respect them, all right? In Jesus' name. Kimberly, I know you came back different. <laughs> You know, people don't have to see it because God works on the inside. And it begins to show on the outside. You know, let, let God do whatever he has to do on the inside of your heart, inside of your soul, your thoughts, your actions, your character. Let him do what he has to do. For the good work that he begun in you, he's going to complete it. Be confident of that very thing that he'll complete the work that he begun in you into the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're all under construction, every one of us. Every one of us are under construction. God is doing a beautiful work, a good work. You just have to allow him. Allow him to do it. Say, do it, Lord. One more time. Say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Amen, yeah. Let him do it. You know, I always, I'm from Compton, California, so talk a little slang, right, Bert? So I say, do your thing, do your thing, Lord, do your thing. Amen. You got to do your thing. God understands my Ebonics. Don't worry about it. Amen. If he understands your English, he understands mine too, you know. So uh, let's, uh, let's pray, and we're going to believe God. We're going to bless God. Uh, we're going to get our worship team. Uh, I know they're excited, the ladies. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is all momentum. This is all momentum that's been happening for the last two, three months. The momentum of God moving in our hearts and moving in our lives. Just jump in the water. I tell you guys, when I go to the beach and I jump in the water, I don't, I don't sit there and let the water hit me because it's cold. I'll psych myself out. I see the water and I run right to it and I jump right in. It's going to be cold if I let it hit my feet or it hit me. It's cold. But I jump in and I'm good. Amen? And that's a jump in today. Jump into the water. Jump into the river. Amen? Praise God like you never praised God before. You say you want to go to the mountain. It's a whole different experience up at the mountain. You know, be part of what God is doing. If God says come to the altar, come to the altar. Amen. If he say, I don't care if you believe God or don't believe God or believe in God, you don't believe in God. You people at uh, home right there on Turning Point Fellowship and YouTube, come to the altar. Come to your TV set and praise God and bless God. Let your neighbors hear you praise God. Amen. Somebody's got to be a witness for God. Somebody's got to testify. Somebody's got to give God glory. Somebody's got to give him praise. Let that somebody be you. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Let that somebody be you. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for your beauty in this place. I can sense your presence, Father. I thank you that we're invited into your presence, Lord God. <laughs> we, we just thank you for being here and doing what you're doing in the lives of all of us, Father. As individuals, corporately, as families, Father. As a father, as a mother, as a brother, as a sister, as a niece, as a cousin. Father, I just thank you. I bless you, Lord, for who you are, that you are God. And there is no other God but you. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that's beneath it. 
You are, I am, as you told Moses. When he asked, what shall I tell them who you are? He says, I am that I am. He is who he is. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just. He's forgiving. He's loving. He's graceful. But remember that he's a just God too. So we love you and we bless you, Father, for our ladies that went up to the mountain, Lord, that they come home, Father, transformed. They have seen and they have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. They have felt your power. They have felt your glory, Lord. They have felt your love and your grace upon their hearts, in their minds, in their souls, and upon their bodies, even so. Even so on their bodies, Lord, that they would know that you are alive. Your word is alive, Lord God, within all our hearts. I thank you for the children that are here today, Lord. I thank you for the blessings upon their lives. Divine protection wherever they go, to and from, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that angels are camped about them. That every wicked and every unreasonable person has been removed from their lives now, Lord. Now they can live free. Free to honor you and to worship you. Father, we've asked for forgiveness. We've been forgiven. Father, we are free. We're no longer called sinners, Lord. We're called the children of God. Father, sons and daughters of the Most High. So we bless you and we thank you for this, Lord, that we're a son and we're a daughter of who you are, Father. We know who you are and who we are in Christ Jesus. We've been forgiven, Father. The authority and the power has been given to us to overcome and to walk over serpents and scorpions and to recognize every lie of the devil. That you would say, it's a lie. You're not speaking here no more. You're not living here any longer. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for the overcoming power. Father, as we worship you, as we praise you, let us be free, Father. Let us open up our arms, Father. Let us jump up and down, clap our hands, move to the left and to the right, Father. Let us dance before you like we never danced before, like King David danced before you, Lord. Let us dance, Lord. We love you. We honor you and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. And all his beautiful people said, amen. amen. Let's have the worship team up here. Come to the altar. Come on up to the altar. Be blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Want to turn me off? Thank you, Lord. to do church ready to worship we're ready to worship
Lord. Their chains break today. God is too good not to be. And this is not a show. This is Jesus.
The blessings of the Lord, amen. <laughs> wow. I could go on for hours. I've been uh, done plenty of hours in worship. It's beautiful, amen. It's uh, something happens when the children of God worship Him. You know, when you worship Him, God is doing something right now. You know, some of you can't feel it, some of you can't see it, but it's happening right now. God is changing an atmosphere in your life, in your mindset, in your heart, in your homes. God is changing an atmosphere. Don't be the one that breaks that. You, you, you walk in there praising God. If they see you dancing, 
Just praise God. Eh? No matter what they think, no matter what they say, you just praise God. You bless God. Amen? <laughs> Do something different if you want different results. Amen? <laughs> Go ahead and take a seat for us. We are going to have some church today. Oh, man. I don't know, man. You can uh, uh, feel the anointing of God. Man, praise be to God. I do want to give a word, but uh, uh, I'm going to let God have his way. Amen. Uh, these flowers arrangements you see today, they were given by the Grajeda family, uh, Ray and Patty and Gustavo. Come on, amen. Praise God. They're beautiful. Uh if you guys want, uh, uh, you guys want to donate yourselves, uh, see Kimberly. Kimberly, if you want to raise your hand for me real quick, stand up, Kimberly, so they can see you. This is Sister Kimberly right here. Amen. See her. That's her ministry right there. So uh, that's what she's giving to the church. Amen. If you guys don't buy them, she's gonna buy them. You know, her and her husband. But it's supposed to be between us all. You know, there should be a list of people that want to buy flowers to bless the house of God. Amen. Give him to the house and uh, he'll give into to your house, man. Some of you lacking no good thing. You know that, you know. You got more than enough, amen. Yeah, some of you are ready to buy a house. You've been thinking about it. You're ready to do that, you know. Uh, search the web. You'll find some good uh, programs that are out there for first-time buyers and things like that that uh, you only have to put down 10%, 17%, 3% down, amen. That's all I put down on my house is 3%. And... Uh, we bought our house, you know, seventeen thousand uh, dollars. We bought it in a, as a down payment, and, and God blessed us. Been there eleven years, and it's a, a beautiful house. And uh, God is good. God supplies every one of our needs. Amen. So uh, it's time to give. With that said, in Jesus' name. <laughs> well, you can get more excited than that. Come on now. We're going to give unto the Lord. If you need an envelope, raise your hands. There it is. Amen. Tithe and offering time. It's just time to give to the Lord out of a grateful heart. And if you don't have a, a check on you or cash, uh, keep your hands up. They'll get it to you. There's the phone number, 714-477-7736. Go with me. Go with me. 714 Four seven 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 three six. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it right there for you guys that are on uh, YouTube and on uh, Facebook. Thank you. And for you that are here at home and some of you teenagers that have jobs, you got to learn how to tithe and give. You want you want promotions. You want a, a, a better job. You want benefits. Tithe and you give to the Lord. You know uh, this doesn't get it for you. It's just your obedience. It ain't the amount of money you put in here. Don't ever be calm by any man. If, if you put this amount of money, you're going to get this back. It's not about that. It's your obedience. The obedience of the heart. That, that's where it all comes from. And uh, whatever God drops in your heart, what God drops in your heart. Because we're tightwads. Somos codos. You know, so we want to give God $10 when I give $5. But he gave you life and he gave you his son. Amen. So we're to give our best back to him. You know, and if it's 20 bucks is your best, $5 is your best, that's your best. Give to him. But if $5 ain't your best, $8 ain't your best, you, mean you want to give God your best because you want the best from God. I know I do. Amen. So uh, we give unto the Lord out of a great heart. So give in Jesus' name.
Where's Arturo? Where's Arturo? At the library? Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. We're going to have the Gonzalez family come on up here. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Can I have a mic? Thank you, Mija. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Stretch your hands forth as they pray. Just, just being grateful to God. Come on, man. You know yes, what to do. Father God, I want to give you thanks for everything that's taking place today, Lord. Amongst all of us, Father God, yes, our sisters, you have touched them, Lord. It is proven, Lord, once again, you are not a God of coincidence. This is taking place only and solely because of you, Father God. Father God, I thank you for all the offerings and all the tithes that have been taking place today, Father God. May you be full ten times fold in your household, Lord. May you please, please continue to be with us and all of our loved ones, Father God, as we go about our days and our lives in the future days to come, Father God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. All right. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our worship team. Let's give them a good round of applause. Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's good to see you in here, Sister Linda. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's my sister right there, man. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I want to uh, go and have a seat. Go and have a seat. Uh, I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you guys uh, on, uh, on the Lord and uh, your overcoming. Uh, don't check out yet. Don't check out mentally. Don't check out spiritually. Stay in. Learn how to stay in till the end. Because sometimes the blessing is at the midnight hour. Amen. Where Paul and Silas, they praised God and blessed God. They were about to get... 
whipped and beat to death. And uh, at the midnight hour, they praised God, and God saw them through. Amen? Yeah. I've I seen uh, God work in so many miracles. Uh, three times God has used uh, this man right here to raise the dead. Three people have been raised from the dead because of God and God's glory. Uh, uh, one of his sisters is here, Stacy, uh, Mike, Subia. Uh, they were ready to uh, plug him out, get him out. It was done, right, Margie? It was all but a done deal, and uh, we went and prayed. And when I say we, I mean the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we went to go pray, and God raised them from the dead. They said he would be a vegetable. They said uh, someone would have to take care of him for the rest of his life. Not so. Mike is still the Mike, man. He's still, still got a lot of power in him, right? <laughs> Mike is alive, and he's well. What, uh, what God can do. So don't let go of what God has done for you, ladies. And you ladies that didn't go, you know, you believe and trust God that the same word that was given to them will come upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, it was a tremendous word. I'm hearing, I'm, I'm getting good reports uh, from up there, and that's good to, to hear and to know that our sisters are becoming sisters. Amen. They're growing, amen, together in Christ. And that's, that's what it's all about. We're family. You know, you're no better than me. And you. We're just better than what we used to be in Christ Jesus. Amen. Ain't no one better than no one here. You know, God just uses all and we love each other. Amen. And you got to know that they have faults too, just like yours. Amen. We all have our faults. We all have our shortcomings. But thank God for his mercies that are new every day that we can start off every day. Brand new, brand new. Every day you get a new turn. You get a new uh, opportunity to live for him. So it's a grand opportunity. Uh, I just want to uh, say well done. Well done, ladies. Give yourselves a good round of applause. Well done. Amen. Amen. you done well. Uh, I want to thank the ladies that were in charge. Bobby, go ahead and stand up, Bobby. Bobby Joe Meyer. <laughs> Sandra Sanchez, go ahead, Sandra Sanchez. <laughs> and Margarita Silva. Those three ladies, uh, they put it together. They, uh, they got the speakers together, and they prayed, and they believed God. And uh, you see the results. The results because of prayer. Amen? The results because of what God does in people's, people's lives that are faithful to him, you know? Uh, it's not, you know, it's just loving God, man. I, I just want to tell you guys the truth. Just love God with all your might, with all your strength, and all your mind, and Things are going to work out. Stay in the word. Pray. Talk to him. Pray means talk to him. Talk to him on a daily basis. You ain't got to go put on your robe or nothing, your uh, priestly robe. That's Jesus Christ. He's on you already. Amen. You come with that built-in robe of God upon your life. Your beautiful people know that. You know that you're loved by God. I, I want you ladies to know that. Share that with your daughters. Love on your daughters. Hug on, their on your daughters. You know, even if they're not your daughters, they may be your stepdaughters, but you got to learn to love on them. Because it's, it's easy to love your, your own daughter, but can you love someone else's daughter? I, I, I raised two stepchildren. I raised Bradley Volpe and I raised Brianna, you know, uh, Nava, and I love them, man. I love Bradley. Bradley can, Bradley's a test for me, but I love him. I, I, I love Bradley. <laughs> I love Brad, and he, and he comes, you know, he comes on his own, man. That, that, that's a blessing for me that, you know, a, a child that's not mine naturally, but spiritually he's mine, that uh, he comes to church on his own for whatever reason. I know he comes for Jesus first, but whatever reason, he may have a, no, I'm not going to say that, you know, <laughs> but, uh, 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 <laughs> but he's here. And uh, so that's why I encourage you guys to love him. They may not be yours, but God gave them to you. God gave them to you to take care of them and watch over them. 
Amen. And for you who have adopted children, you know, God gave you that to, you know, to adopt them and love on them, you know, to be part of your life. That, that's beautiful. Amen. Uh, so I just want to say thank you, ladies, for uh, going through it all. And uh, right now when we were praising God, God, God was telling me this. You know, we, we release pain, hurt. We release uh, disappointment, unforgiveness. We release all that. We do. Amen? We release that as believers. I want you to learn to release praise and worship. I want you to learn how to release love and kindness. Because those things are inside of you too. Don't let the negative take over all the pain and all the hurt, all the disappointment in life, what we could have been, what we should have been. Don't let that be a disappointment to you. We, we concentrate and focus on those things way too much as people of God. Let's focus on the righteousness of God, the beauty of God, the honor of God, the integrity of God that lives within us. Let, let, let's focus on the praise and the worship of God. Can you praise God at home? Can, you know, and I'm not saying you got to break out with the, uh, the flags and all that. If you do, that, fine, that's beautiful. But they're just a praise sometimes that you just stand and, Father, I love you. I love you more than anything in life. I bless you and I honor you with my life, my thoughts, my words, my actions. Today, I bless you, my Father. Just with worship. Thank you for my life. You made it. Yes. You made it. You're strong. You overcame. You overcame, Edgar. When you got here, you were a mess. And I'm not trying to put you on blast, but I see what God has done in your life, what he's doing in your life. It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. The twins. You guys don't. I want you to see the beauty that you have. You're beautiful. Both of you. Going to be gorgeous ladies for the Lord. You're worshipers at heart. Worship God. You see your crazy mama up here. She was crazy out there. She's crazy. Let her be crazy for God. Amen. Let her be crazy for God. Don't look at what she did or what she said last night. That's who she was last night. Today's a new day. Amen. We got to believe that, you know. We got to live in that stuff. God has done something new. Ya Dios ha hecho algo nuevo. Hasta en usted. Si lo puede creer, que usted salió de allá arriba, de, bajó de allá arriba, una mujer nueva. Yeah. 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 Ella le ha hablado. Gózase en el Señor. Rejoice in the Lord. Because some of us think we got it all together. And when you think that, you're going to fall. But when a man thinks he stands, he'll fall. We got to learn how to be humble before the Lord. Because if not, the Lord will humble you. So stay humbled. Stay bowed before the Lord spiritually. Just stay bowed. I bow my heart and I bow my life before you. And you may not do it every day. But when you remember, do it. You can be in the restroom. You can be in your car. Bow your head. Father, I bow my life before you. You can do that, Blake. You don't have to be Mr. Perfect. Because you'll never be Mr. Perfect in the flesh. But in the spirit, you are. But in our flesh, we fight this thing constantly. It wants to do ugly. So, ladies, I want to just encourage you guys today. Go, uh, Give me Luke uh, one thirty seven. I'm just going to encourage you real quick right here. Know the word. Know the word that's in your heart. Know the word that's in your life, Sally. Don't beat yourself up no more. That's over. It's done. Praise God. Bless God now. So what would people say? They're going to say it anyway. They said it when we were out there in the streets. They'll say it while we're in church. It don't matter. We're going to bless God. Amen. For with God, nothing is impossible. Would you believe God for the mountain when you were there? Know that you received it. Know that it was imparted. Amen. It's been imparted in your life. It is yours. 
What you thought was impossible was not impossible for God. All things are possible for him who believes. You just got to believe it. There's professional football players, Jesus, that are 5'7". Professional basketball players that are 5'7". Baseball players that are 5'5", five, 5'4". Five, five, Professionals. Don't matter the size of the man. matter the size of the heart. We can be all things to Christ. Amen. And through Christ. So I want to encourage you guys in that. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 57. If you're taking notes, just write them down for you can get it, ladies. You got victory. Bajaron con victoria. La victoria es de ustedes. De cada uno que está sentado aquí, la victoria es de ustedes. You already have victory. You don't have to fight for victory. Victory is yours. You don't have to fight from pain and hurt any longer, no more. It's over, it's done. Fight in victory now. You're a champion. If you, if you ever see boxing or uh, 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 people that are confident, as long as they're not arrogant, look at their lifestyles. Don't look at Hollywood, arrogance. Don't look at them. But there's people that are confident in Christ Jesus. Amen. A champion. When he's a champion, he has to fight like a champion. He has to be a champion. He goes into the ring. I am the champ. I must knock this guy down. I must beat him up because he's trying to take my crown. And the enemy's going to come and he's going to try to take your crown. He's going to try to steal your victory. Don't allow him to do that in Jesus' name. You grab onto that victory and you hold on to it. No matter how your man talks to you, no matter what he looks like, you know what I mean? He can wake up with the poochy face all grouchy. Let him be. Let him be. You just smile and you praise God. Amen. It says, but being. Uh, but thanks be to God who always causes me to triumph, who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. You have Jesus living in you. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have victory. Amen. Matthew 4.4. 4. I just want to give you guys some scriptures, ladies and men that are here. Don't be the cause of your woman to trip and fall. Do not be that. And you ladies, don't cause yourself. To do it. Don't start looking at yourselves all like you did before. You're a new person in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Check it out. All things have become new now. You're new in Christ. Amen. Get rid of the feel sorry for uh, attitude. A lot of you people have feel sorry for me attitudes. Don't do that. My sister Linda, I appreciate her. I really do. She's my friend on Facebook. That, that, that girl, she, she was a single mom for a long time. How many children you got? 15? <laughs> no. Yeah. She has eight children. And most of her life, she raised them by herself. Come on, give her a round of applause. Now she does well, amen? Glory to God. She owns her own business and all that. She ain't crying. She ain't tripping. She's doing what she's got to do. She wanted to quit how many times? <laughs> Countless of times, right? You want to quit, but you don't. Don't quit, ladies. Keep fighting. Eight children. You got two. You got two children. You got three children and you're tripping. Imagine if you had eight sitting at your table. Like, woo. But it's a full life. I had five in my household. It was a full life. And now we're almost uh, empty nesters, what they call empty nesters, where Lucas is 23 years old now. Now he comes and goes as he, as he pleases as long as he lets me know where he's at because he's still under my roof. But uh, uh, we're home by ourselves a lot, you know. And I, I long for the noise, for the bickering, the fighting, the wrestling and all that stuff, rally yelling, ah, help me, all that stuff. I, I, it was a beautiful time. I, I treasured it because I knew it was going to be leaving. Because I was raised with my family of nine, nine children. And it was a lot of fun. We, we bickered, we fought, we uh, uh, wrestled and did all kinds of things in that house in Compton, California. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And so when I got that five family, it, it was fun for me. It was nothing. It was just, you know, my wife would be saying all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, leave them alone. Let them just be. They're children. Let them fight. Let them wrestle. You know? 
The first one coming out is going to get a whipping. That's all. <laughs> That's how my mom was. You know what I mean? Amen. El primero que llora le voy a dar con el cinto. You know? That's how she would say it. And she would take it to you too, boy. You know? But here, Matthew 4, 4. This is Jesus Christ speaking. He says, and he answered, he said, it is not, it is written. Shall man live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. When he was being tempted in the desert place for 40 days and 40 nights being tempted, he was hungry. He was thirsty. But he didn't give up. He didn't let the enemy come in here with all kinds of bad ideas and negativity. He says, no. No, it's not going to be that way. Man shall not live by bread alone. Amen. We're not going to live by our emotions alone. But we're going to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. For that is the bread of life, the word of God. And we got to eat off the bread. We got to eat the bread. You got to constantly eat the word. If it's one verse a day until you get to one chapter a day, until you get to two chapters a day, until you just begin to read the book out of habit, a good habit. We got rid of the bad habits. Leave them at the mountain. Whatever you wrote on that rock, leave it there. Do not pick it up. Amen. Do not pick it up. You cast it into a well, a bottomless well. That thing just went on and on and on. In Jesus' name. Live well now. Live whole. No one can control you. Come on. Most, most of you guys are Hispanic ladies. I don't, uh, no one can control you. Even the Caucasian ladies, no one can control you. I got to know Bobby here, you know. I thought Andy was the big dude. When he gets next to Bobby, he's like, no. No. <laughs> Bobby's, a, Bobby's a spark plug. I didn't know that in her, you know. But she's a sweetheart too, right? She's a sweetheart. And sometimes as a leader, you got to be a spark plug. You, you ladies know your mothers. Come on. You know, get mad at a leader. They're kind of mean to me. What do you think your kids say about you? Yeah. They're mean. She's mean. Let me go ask daddy. You know, right? Especially if it's girls. They want to be their daddy boy, daddy girls, you know. And the boys run the mama, you know. Why, right, Rosalito? <laughs> but uh, continue to confess the word. Speak the word. Get a devotion on your phone. Get two or three of them if you're not reading your word. Listen to the word on Audible, Bible. If you don't read your, your word, listen to it. You ladies, you young ladies that have phones. It doesn't always have to be TikTok, TikTok, and all that other stuff, whatever. I don't even know what it is. You know, that just came to my mind. Get some headbuds on and, and listen to the word while you walk around. When you're at school, instead of listening to all that junk and because the, the rap music nowadays is way worse than it was in the 70s and 80s when I was out there in the streets, you know. It, it is horrible. Even Facebook is becoming uh, rated R. The stuff that they're showing up there now, it, it is nasty. Nasty, man. As soon as you see it, you're like, man, I can't even look at that stuff. It, it's crazy what they're putting out there in the media. So uh, stay away from that stuff. Don't even glance at it. Just, you know what, no. And if you're strong enough, just, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my phone for other things, for other resources. Amen? Amen? So keep the word. Isaiah 55, 11. I want you to remember what you experienced up there. Don't let it go. Recuérdese de todo que pasó allá arriba. Recuérdese en su corazón. Remember in your heart. Hide the word in your heart that you would not sin against God. Because that's who we sin against. And if we sin against God, we're going to sin against man. So you hide the word in your heart. You fill your heart with, with the word of God that you would not sin. But that you would be a blessing. That's what you're called to be, is a blessing. God bless you to what? To be a blessing. To bless others. And it doesn't always say money. In America, we think it's money. We think it's clothes. We think it's a car. No, a blessing, a smile. Good morning. What about saying good morning every day, Jacob, when you wake up? That's a blessing to your mom and your dad. Huh, Jesus? Good morning, mom. Good morning, dad. You'll blow them away. Johnny, 
you'll blow your mom away. You wake up and say, good morning. I mean, happily. Not all going, good morning. No. Be, rejo uh, be rejoiceful. Be happy, Joe. Can't nobody give you joy but the Lord, mijo. There you go, man. Just smile, man. They, they can have all their bad days they want, man. You just be who you are. That's how I am. You know, I, there's, there's a bunch of units here, and you guys can get on a brother at times, you know. You guys can get on a brother's nerve and all that stuff at times in life, and I got to just deflect all that stuff, man. I can't carry that stuff with me. You guys will wear me out. So I give it to God. I said, these are yours, Father. You got to give me the wisdom. You got to give me the understanding how to teach them how to walk with you, how, how to have a relationship with you. And I see you guys healthy. You guys are healthy Christians. Están lleno de salud estos, ¿verdad? Es una iglesia gozosa. Una iglesia llena de amor, ¿verdad? You guys are full of love. You're full of joy. Yeah, that smile you have, man. Praise God. Amen. Don't be, don't be uh, shy to, to smile. Don't walk around all sassy. I hate to see sassy girls. Serious. I'm using that word purposely. Hate. I hate sassy girls. They think they look all cute. Look at. That ain't cute at all. That's ugly. You got an ugly face and you're a good looking woman or a good looking girl. Smile, man. It's easier to smile than put a frown on. Because a smile is natural. A frown, you got to put it on. So just smile. Mm, okay, you got one right there. Praise God, right there, amen. You got to learn to smile. This is the word of God, the word of God that has been given to you guys. So shall my word, the Lord says. That goes forth from my mouth shall not return void, but it would accomplish all that, uh, what, it, what I please, and it will, shall prosper in all the things which I sent it. You have the word of God in your lips, in your heart. Why not speak life? Why speak death? This is your household. These are your four walls you live in at home. Why not be positive? Why not be good? Why does everything got to be funky? Huh? No, let's, let's charge it up in our homes, ladies. You guys got charged up. I want you to go home with that. Amen? Go around, go around hugging everybody. Amen? Go home and hug the dog, you know? The dog was like, what the heck is going on? Amen? I know my dogs trip when I hug them. I hug my dogs now. I'm getting real sensitive, you know. I, yeah, I got two big old dogs, big cane corso, and they're big dogs, huh? And imagine, yeah, they're mastiffs, and uh, I'm, I'm giving them water, and, you know, I put the bucket, honestly, I put the bucket right there, and I put on the nozzle, and I'm watching the water, and one comes right here, and he puts his head right here, and the other one goes between my legs. And I'm right here petting them both. I love you guys, good. Then I grab one, I grab the other, and I hug them. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I hugging these dogs? <laughs> But it's the love of God that has changed my heart. Because I used to be mean to my dogs, right? Yeah, I used to be mean. I don't want to tell you guys what I used to do to my dogs. But now, you know, uh, you, get, you get to love on them. You get to pet them. It's a trip, you know. I walk in the house, I go, oh, I smell like dog. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all right now. I, I ain't tripping. You know, I just go home and wash my arms, wash my hands, wash my face. And, and I'm good again. Amen. And that's how we should be with one another in your home. It starts in your home. Yeah. What about hugging your husband when you get home? He wants a hug. Yeah. He doesn't want like, did you fix dinner? <laughs> what are we having today? You didn't do laundry? Oh, my God. My car was on empty, too. <laughs> no, he, did, he doesn't want that stuff. He wants to be loved. He wants to be honored. Can I get an amen, Fernando, back there? Amen. <laughs> Oh, he ain't raising his hand for now. Looking back there like, oh, you ain't getting me in trouble, brother. All of us, amen? All of us, amen. There you go. Ozzy's got his hand up, sister. You know? <laughs> no. I, I, you just want to be happy, man. You know, I, I'm one of those people. Tony, you know that, Tony. You know? Because Tony's told me that. Not everybody can be happy, pastor. 
<laughs> but we can. We can. Tony's changed a lot. Him and Conce, oh, my God. Conce is a trip because he's a... <laughs> Because when I met Conce, she, she, you know, she was far off, standoffish. She was loving me from afar, huh? Yeah, <laughs> way far. <laughs> and I told Tony, can I pray for her? Can I lay hands on her, brother? Let God change her life. And he says, you know what you're doing, Pastor? <laughs> and God has changed her life. I love Conce, man. She's my cousin. She's my prima. She, I love Conce, and I know she loves me. You know, in her little way, she loves me. <laughs> You know, uh, this is how life is. This is the love of Christ Amen. that he's given us. We, we, we to, we're to share that love with others. Amen. And ladies, you're doing good. You're doing good. You know. The, the atmosphere in the church has changed. It has changed. You, you ladies have changed the atmosphere. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. You're world shakers. You're atmosphere changers. If you wake up in the morning, you know, if you wake up in the morning, si uno se levanta y está, está toda amargada, así se va a ir la casa. Toda amargada. Pero si uno se levanta con gozo, alabando al Señor, así va a estar la casa. If, if, you, if you wake up, oh, oh, good morning. I hate Mondays. Your kids are hearing that. Your kids hear that. Guess what they're going to grow up saying? I hate Mondays. And you're wondering like, oh, what happened to them? Well, you taught them that. But if you wake up, ladies, because you are atmosphere changers, you're, you're, you, you run the atmosphere of that house. If you wake up and you begin to praise God and bless God. And, Good morning, Jose. You have a blessed day today, baby. And you go up and you kiss him and hug him. He's like, oh, oh. God must have visited somebody, you know. <laughs> but let them, let them, men, hug them. Go with it. Don't like, what's wrong with you? No, go with it, amen. When the hermana wakes up tomorrow morning and she wants to give you a big old hug, Eric, don't fight it. Just receive that hug, amen. amen? Praise God, yeah, exactly. You know, oh, I don't want to say that, too many kids in the room. But the way the Lord talks to me and he blesses me, you know, uh, we can live rich lives. Juan and Erica are around me every day. They, they know how I live. I, this ain't phony what I live the way I live. I, I live my life. I have challenges, but I don't let my challenges rule me. I have negative thoughts, but I don't allow them to rule my mind. I have a, a bad emotions at times, but I don't allow them to overtake me because I put my confidence in God. My trust is in God. My hope, my faith is in God Almighty. And I overcome those things by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And I begin to testify, Mia, how good God is. That's all you got to say, Mia. Father, you are good. And it will change your whole life. Every one of us. Jesus, if you would just say that in the morning, Dios te amo, tú eres un buen Dios. Every day, it'll change your life. It'll change your life back there, Mar Margaret, you know. Amen. What God can do in our lives. I want to encourage you guys that. So, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return void. It won't come empty. As you speak the word, you give it life, it's going to come back with fruit. It's going to come back with evidence, amen? But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the things which I send it. God sends his word to prosper you, to be a blessing to you, to make you healthy and make you well. Some of you say, well, you know, I got diabetes, I got high blood pressure. Quit putting salt in your food. Quit eating so much bread and tortillas. Amen? Rice, let's use our mind now. Amen? Amen? We, we got to do that. We got to change our habits. You know, oh, I, I blessed it. I told you that. It's foolishness. 11 o'clock at night, you want to order a T-bone steak and, you know, oh, Lord, bless this meal right there. Pow. 
It's a T-bone steak at 11 o'clock at night. That thing's going to take two days to digest. You know, you're going to be hurting. For us that are older, it hurts. It ain't as good as it used to be. All right, let me go on. So remember the experience you guys had, the glory, the power, and the love, the wisdom, the knowledge that God has dropped in you. Remember this, ladies. Don't let it go. Amen. We sang that song. Uh, it's by Sister uh, Stephanie. What's the name of the title? Don't let it go. What's the name of the song? Don't let it go. Won't let it go. I love that song. When she first got here, she would sing that song. I would tell them, play it again and play it again. I love that song. I won't let it go. I will not let God go. Amen. I said this earlier. earlier the, the world remains the same. Down here remains the same. Anthony didn't change, you changed. Even though he's changing every day, but you made the change. We changed. Uno ha cambiado. El mundo todavía está igual. Pero uno ya ha cambiado. You've changed now. Olivia, you're different from when you went up. I don't care what you tell me. I went up there for the girls. No, you went up there for you. You can't go up there. You ain't Jesus. Nobody's up Jesus. You go up there and you intercede. Yes, that's fine. But we got to go up there for ourselves. If you went up there to preach and only to preach, then you missed it. You missed it. Because we don't just go up there to preach. I don't go up there just to preach. I go up there to live the life and let them preach to me. Your lives will preach to me. I go into, I, I don't know if you guys visited different cabins. Did you guys go in different cabins and visit? I did. I always do when I go up there. I go to, I go to all the cabins throughout the whole weekend. I stop. For an hour, two hours, hour, two hours, I know they got food. I know there's certain cabins that have real good food, you know. <laughs> so I make sure I go there. You know, they order pizzas and all that. Walking around like, dang, they got pizza for sure. Got to go there. <laughs> Brothers tell me, hey, cabin six got pizza. All right, praise God. <laughs> Take a shower and I go over there. And, you know, you get to break bread and you get to share. So I, I would just go into every cabin, you know. And, and I sit there and, I, you know, we talk about what's going on. Right, Andy? I, I say, Eric. How's, how's the Spirit of God speaking to you? What's he saying to you right now, mijo? And he, he'll start talking, right, Tomas? I go to Tomas's cabin, the same thing. What is the Spirit of God telling you right now? You, not me, not nobody. What is he telling you? And you get to fellowship. That's fellowship. And uh, iron is sharpening iron. Amen? So I go to get blessed, too, by you guys. I'm a blessing, but you're a blessing to me, too. I'm no better than you, and you're no better than me. We're just going to be better than what we used to be. Amen? Amen? So I just want to encourage you, ladies, not to let it go. So you went up there to seek change. And I want you to know you got it. Amen. You got it. Amen? God has imparted. God has dropped in you. God has blessed you. Stay with it. Keep it, man. Keep that change that God has done in your heart. Open up. I'm going to be laying hands on you pretty soon one day too, man, and God's going to open you up. Amen. For you ladies that are holding back, I, I've, I've prayed for people, and God just pff, explodes inside of them, and they become different people. They become the person God wants them to be, full of laughter, full of joy. You know, some of you need that. That's healthy. Yeah. Laughter is healthy. Yeah. Joy is healthy, and it's contagious. It's very contagious. If you hang around me and you, yeah, yeah, amen. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're around me and you're a grouchy person, you're not going to be around me very long. I'm not going to hang out with you. I want to be with joyful people. I, I, you know, I'm going a, I'm to a minister to you and try to get you out of that box. But if you just continue to want to go back to the box, go back and go back. Stay there until you learn because you are going to learn. Amen. Like the joy you walked in with me, huh, Stephanie? Walking all day for the rest of your life now, for the rest of your life. Don't let no one change you. That's who you were born to be, to praise God and worship God. Amen. We're going to get, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and get Bobby up here. Here you go, Tomas. Tomas.
they can stand on their feet. So they're gonna get, she's going to give you guys an opportunity to come up here. Now, remember, ABC, Accurate Brief and Christ-Centered. If you start preaching and the pastor stands up, that means you're preaching. That means you're preaching. We don't need no preachers. Pastor and Eric are preachers. Myself. Well, I'm going to read you our theme scripture. We're going to start out. But first, I just want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for Turning Point Fellowship. Thank you, Lord God, for all the women and all the children and all the husbands and all the kids. Amen. And we're just so grateful and thankful to be here. We made it back down the mountain and <laughs> safe and secure. So we just want to bless the Lord and thank him for all his goodness because his, this weekend was full of God's goodness. Amen. So, and I'm not going to preach, <laughs> but this is my security point. <laughs> Anyway, it's the word of God says, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you will keep the judgments and do them. Amen? Amen. And then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people and I will be your God, and I will deliver you from all the uncleanness, and I will call your grain to multiply and bring no famine upon you. Let's go one more. more. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields, so that you will never again bear the reproach of families among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were not good. And you will be loathed by yourselves in your sight for the iniquities and your abominations. And I'll just stop right there. But the Lord wants he, that's what we went there for. That was our theme scripture. And our was transformation. And our t-shirt says it takes time. And that's what we went up there for, to spend time with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I want the women voluntarily, I don't want to call you by name. But please come up and give a short testimony of what God did in your heart at the mountain. What was your breakthrough? Amen? Amen. Thank you. So come on up, ladies. We had some great testimonies today. Hi, guys. Pastor, I'm not going to make it awkward, but I'm going to look at you because there's too many people here, okay? But... <laughs> I was trying to say this at the mountain, but God wanted me to say it here. And I was told I got to be the first one. And my voice is going to be too loud, Thomas. Thank you. Um, then I have to be the first one to say it here. So that's why I'm here. Okay. <sighs> okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> breakthrough. Um, what we had to do is we had to exchange our hearts. They gave us a stony heart. We had to change it. The rock that I got had, had a bunch of lines on it, so I made a joke that it's ugly and has stretch marks like my stomach. <laughs> what I got from that was the Lord telling me that your imperfect heart, so full of scars and imperfections, are beautiful to me. You are perfect in every way because I made you. You were wonderfully and perfectly made in my image. I love you, and now it is time for you to love yourself. I will wash away your blemishes. You are in your cocoon. I'm not done transforming you into, the into my gorgeous daughter. 
just like you were holding onto your rock and your blemishes, let it go so I can expose them and wash it away. I, um, I have a problem doing stuff for everybody else and not doing stuff for me. And I just pushed everything down. And God has been telling me that I, I'm not alone, even though I feel like I'm just alone. So he wanted to be funny and left, let my ride leave me in the mountains. <laughs> my ride literally left early. But that was his funny way of telling me that I'm not alone. And the sisters in Turning Point Fellowship are not going to leave me on the mountaintop, and neither is God. I'm not alone. I like to thank God for my life. I want to, I would like to thank God for everything because he's provided everything in my life. My two sons have passed away and my heart just got kind of hard, you know. But God has opened, has blessed me so much and he's given me a new heart. <laughs> I don't think I could ever have a new heart, but I have a new heart and my mind has been renewed. <laughs> And I'm not preaching. <laughs> I'm just grateful for all the women that went. You guys were so awesome. Bobby, love you. And I'm so blessed for all of you. You know, I don't know you yet, but I will get to know all your names. <laughs> and I'm here in case anybody wants to pray or anything. I'm always here. Okay? God bless you. ABC, one, two, three. No, okay. <laughs> I just want to praise God because I went up there just, we've been wanting this for so long, for so long. And it came to pass. Um, we saw a lot of sisters. You would have, Pastor, you would have been happy because you know what? It looked like there was no issues at all. And we all came together. We prayed. And I just praise God because you know what? I'm free. I'm full of joy. God is in control. And... Amen. Sisters, come share your testimony because you know what? We've prayed for this for five years. And I said at the mountain, let's show them what the Lord has done. Amen. Everybody, I'm Margarita. So, Magas. So, I had um, the week before I went up there, I had a spirit that has been roaming in my family, and it was suicide. And I was, I had to get ready because I was going to speak and give a word and um, impart in the women's, and I couldn't because my mind the. The enemy was attacking me so bad because that spirit was just breathing down my neck. That even when the phone rang, I didn't even want to answer it because I didn't want to hear what was on the other line. And I, I looked at it and acted like I was sleeping. I had to turn around and pick that phone up. But I kept saying, nothing's going to stop me from going to this mountain. So I went and I pushed through and I got there. And when I got there, it kept saying, I wasn't equipped enough to be there. And so I didn't ha really have a word to give. And I kept, I got up early, I walked and I talked with God. And he said, I picked you for a reason. Because it's not you who's going to speak. It's going to be me speaking through you. 
So you don't have to worry about it. And he gave me that word that morning, and I spoke. And God showed me that he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the proud. And it's like, I'm nothing without him. He has shown me, and he has built me, and he has restored me. And he dropped a double portion of joy <laughs> that it just, it became contagious where you just, you'll never know what happened on that mountain. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So when I went up there, hi, <laughs> I didn't really know what I went up there. I got asked the first night what I was expecting, and I kind of figured that the weekend before I got some answers that I wanted from my heart, but I guess for me what I learned or what I, yeah, I learned and I got validated was, like, God's real, like, he hears you, <laughs> no matter how much you wrong choices you make it's all a lesson you'll get through it and it's really true when they say like he'll give you more than you could ask for i picked this outfit before i left and i didn't know what day i was gonna wear it and it's true i'm just really grateful because when i was up there i couldn't even i really couldn't think like we got a rock and at first, I just got a rock because I thought I was going to keep the rock. I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> I just got it because it was cool. So I put that one aside, and I got another one. And during the first service on Saturday, I had a marker in my backpack. And every time they were talking or I, something came to remembrance, like things that I guess were weighing on me, I would write it on the rock. So by the time that service was done, like, the rock was covered in <laughs> words, and I'm like, I hope nobody looks at this rock because they're not even know what this is. <laughs> so I threw it in. I threw it in the well, <laughs> and <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> I used to always say, or yeah, I used to always say, I can't say it now. I'm just really thankful for that experience because it was so different. I was telling Pastor Angel a minute ago when he asked me how it went. I'm crying now, but up there I've never experienced being in the presence of God and actually getting stuff and not being super emotional and crazy about it. So for me, it was even more real. Like, I don't have to put on a show. I don't have to be overwhelmed. I can just, I can receive it and it's okay. And I can't say I don't have friends anymore. <laughs> You know, I told, I know, I know, and that's why I'm not looking at pastor because, you know, I grew up with brothers, Mike, and, you know, I was tough. I beat up everybody, and you know, but not too long ago, I told pastor that my heart has been harder than the stone that you gave up there, and I know I told you, Bobby, I wasn't ready to give a testimony, and I wasn't going to do it, and I didn't want to do it up there. I didn't. When I went up there, I wasn't expecting anything, you know. I'll be honest with you. I didn't. I think my heart's just been hardened to God, to everything, my husband, my kids, because, like I told Pastor, everyone always depends on me. And like he said, my brother Mike, you know, he lives with me now. He moved in two years ago, and he, 
told my husband and I he was our anniversary gift. I was trying to see if I could take a refund back, but you know, unfortunately, you know, I couldn't. But I just wanted to share real quick. I didn't know what to expect, and I went up there, and I was, you know, my brother Mike, and you know, you know, and and I was like, why me? Why do I have to take care of him? Why do I? But I had asked God to save his life, and. Uh, Pastor, you don't know this, and I know, but when you stood up here, and you haven't talked about him for years, not in a bad way, but you don't know this, they were still going to kill him. He was going to go to hospice on a Monday. We were at Barnwell. My dad was mad at me, but, you know, it wasn't up to me, and so Sunday I was at church, and I called my husband, and I said, I'm not picking up my mom, not taking my dad, you know, and when I went up the mountain, that was heavy on my heart, was... Why do I got to take care of my brother? You know, why? And I didn't share this with Leonard, but I saw him today. And so anyways, real quick, I, that Monday he was going to hospice. And we all know what that is. It's basically he was, so I get there Sunday. My, my husband says, pick, you know, pick me up. My sister was there and her daughter. So I walk in and his nurse starts to walk out and come to the bed and, you know, the only reason is because what you said up here, I didn't know what God wanted from me. I didn't know what, you know, I was like, well, everybody, what, what, you know, what is it? And I leaned over to my brother and, you know, his favorite song is, our great is our God. I leaned over to him and I said, brother Leonard wanted me to sing your favorite song. And everybody's always praying, was always praying for my brother. I mean, I, and, you know, always Leonard, but everybody. And I leaned over and I started singing. I, I won't attempt to sing because I'm not, you know, <laughs> like Margie or Stephanie, but I started singing. How great is our God, sing with me. And for a whole 10 seconds, he turned around like he had not had a stroke and he sang for a whole 10 seconds. My sister fouled her knees and I told him, Brother Leonard, not my husband, because my husband's name is Leonard, too, but Brother Leonard wanted me to sing this to you. And after that, he kept lip syncing, and they kicked us out, and two hours went by, and they came back, and they said, we're not sending him to hospice. We're going to make sure that he lives. Yeah. So, and I know it's selfish, and I, like I told you, my heart has just gotten so hard, and I just... I feel like I'm an ice queen because <laughs> it's just so, and the women that I stayed with, I just feel like they're way up here and I'm just way down here and I realize, yeah, I'm not alone. You know, I have my brother, I have my families and like you said, that's what it's meant for and that's what God, and it took for me to come down here and for you and not that, you know, it just for here for me to realize what, that's what God wanted me to hear. That's what I went up there for, was to, was for that. So that way my heart, just opened up my heart to my whole family so I can go home and be a blessing to them and with love and happiness. And so, So when I went up there on Friday, I, I had to speak, and we each were going to speak on one thing, and mine was freedom. And I'm like, I go, well, I don't have a scripture. I, I, I don't know what to say, but I know that the one we transform into a butterfly, a butterfly is free. And I said, I know that I know that I'm free. And I said, I'm free because I forgave. And I said, when I was um, real ugly inside of me and it was hindering me, I was sick and tired of being hindered by the unforgiveness so I shared that um, uh, once the, uh, the father had told me, um, I wanted this person to be exposed. And uh, when I was praying about it and crying, the father said, it doesn't matter. And then the next thing he said, and I forgot to mention up there, but I told Sister Celia and the, the ladies, um, then he said, I know. 
and that was like, boom. It doesn't matter. God knows everything. And I was just like sobbing and sobbing. So I shared with the ladies about, um, you know, for, forgiveness. I'm free. I'm free. And it was a blessing to see the women get blessed. I mean, to hear the words, to see uh, a sisterhood there, to see uh, literally the three sisters come together and be blessed, to see Sister Regina doesn't play the drums, but she was on that thing. And I said, man, you really blessed me. <laughs> she really blessed me doing that. Uh, it was good. Uh, the words that came, God gave me a word, and, you know, I, I struggle. I, I've been hearing a lot of word about what God's going to do with my life, and I tell them when I talk to him, I don't understand everything, Lord, but you got to show me, and you got to teach me. And so I received a word up there, and um, I am a soldier, I, and I know that I have a strong character, and I always tell the Father, I'm confident because of you, because I wasn't very confident and a lot of people tell me, oh, you're, you're confident. And it's like, I'm confident now because of Jesus. And that's the only reason why. But I, and I, my other, uh, my other uh, one is I'm a prayer warrior. I know that I know that I know God hears my prayers. He hears me when I cry out to him, when I'm praying, whatever I'm doing, the Father hears me. And that... Um, when I read or I'm going listening, because I don't always like to read the word, but I'll listen to it or I'll listen to scriptures. But I've been telling him, I want to understand when I open this. I want to understand everything you have for me. I want to be able just to, to know it. And I do know it in my heart, but I don't know the scriptures. And I, I do want to know when I'm teaching or speaking the word, I want to know. And the father said he was going to download that to me. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so that was good. It was a blessing to me to sit with different women and to get to know them. Very nice women. Everybody that I met, it was just beautiful. And I had a good time. And I encourage you to come out next year. Revival. Revival. Since I was a little girl, I used to go to church with my grandparents. I would stand there, watch the pastor praise, and I would say, I want to be like her. I want to be like her. God, I was being disobedient to God for many years. Why? Because of people talking about me, judging me. Because, you know, I'm very transparent, very blunt. Tattoos, you know. And, um, you know, on, on Friday and Saturday, I got two words. You know, I, before I went up there on Friday, I asked God to heal my heart. I didn't want to feel that anymore. I was trying to prepare myself before I went up there because I knew that God had something for me. I went up there expecting and I knew what God was going to do in my life. As we were worshiping, hermana, she started marching. She started marching. La hermana empezó a marchar. Y cuando ella empezó a marchar alrededor de toda la iglesia, el Señor me dijo, síguela. The Lord told me to follow. And I was standing back. Said, something kept pushing me. So when I look back, they were already like behind us. So I ran behind her. And as I did that, I felt like I was standing in a heater. From the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. When I did that, women started following. Women got up and they started following. They started marching with us. When I look back, I don't know who was behind me. But I was like, oh, we. And I started calling women, you know. Sister Vesilia, oh, we were, thank God. 
I didn't know that I was going to be an armor bearer that weekend until my cousin texted me. And I remember what Prophet AJ told me. And I said, thank you, Father, because I was ready to give up on hospitality. I was discouraged. And he gave me that word. I said, okay, thank you, Father. You know, I'm going to continue. I'm going to be obedient with you. So when my cousin texted me, my cousin Sandra, I was like, okay, well, I have to be there. I didn't even know I was going to, you know, be an armor bearer. But I did it. And I stood behind the, woman, behind the woman and I started praying and I just asked the Lord to, you know, help me. To give me and, and, you know, pray over these women. So I did. And as I did that, my tia Connie said, Mija, do you want to get prayed over? And I said, okay. I took it. So Sister Vicilia, Prophet Vicilia, she got a hold of me and she told me, woo, she was doing this to me. She said, woo, you are on fire. I don't know who was standing behind me, but I felt that heater again. And I said, come on, Lord. I'm ready for you with open hearts, Father Lord. I surrender to you, Father. Do what you have to do in me, Father. Use me, Father Lord. Use me, Father Lord, like you never had before, Father Lord. But let these, let these marks, Father Lord, just be something in my past, Father Lord. That they will see me for who I am now and not my past, Father Lord. She said, revival is what you have. Revival is what you have. Continue to worship God. And when you worship, the women are going to get up and they're going to worship. You're going to speak into women's, women's life. Mia. She just started praising. She just started praying over me. And I fell. I fell back and I received. But I had never, ever, ever felt the presence of, the presence of God like I did this weekend. Not only that, but I used to be an alcoholic. I used to drink. I love to get drunk, and this weekend, that was my past, and this, and this weekend, I, was able to, I got drunk with my two sisters in the spirit. I praise the Lord for that. of fun I didn't I didn't really realize how like stressed and how over my career and everything I am until I had the presence of God hit me and I was like oh man where have you been for so long and I was like oh. and then I was like oh my god I did it to myself so there was so many golden nuggets as Raina said in our room at one o'clock in the morning I'm like why am I awake right now right like 
And that was on Thursday. What are the golden nuggets? What are you waiting for from God? And I was like, I want something amazing. I've been trying to get up to these mountains for years with all the men. And I just, I'm sorry. I'm too tall. I can't do this. Okay. So for years, I've been trying to get up there. For years. I even had my disguises down. I had my fake name. I'm like, I'm going and I'm going to get away with it. And then that never happens. But I got there and I was like, yes. Assessment. When they talk about the walk from the cabins all the way to the sanctuary, it feels like it's so far. And I was like, it's eight feet. <laughs> like, really? This is, this is everything? The giant boulder everybody takes their picture on? It's a rock, y'all. It's a rock. But yeah. So, but basically, I, I just wanted to have fun. I, I want to have fun with God again. I want to have fun with people again. Like, yeah, I, I rode in a car with apparently like the person that I shared an embryo with at like one other time and had no idea. Like I sat with someone who was physically me. It was, it was crazy, but God just did so much and I feel like I lost 90 pounds because I'm not holding all the crap, or all this stuff that I went with. And I definitely had my breakthrough. And like, I used to be super, super joyful. And everyone's like, why do you run around like a clown? I'm like, because there's nothing else to do. Like, it's fun. Just have fun. And I got to have fun with people and with God. And it was amazing. So. My blessing was answer prayer. To see all of you get delivered, healed. Don't be ashamed to come and share it. Let them see what you experienced. Let them see what God did. That laughter of the Holy Spirit, that was just a peace. Show them, show them, show them what you got. My daughter forgave me. <laughs> she was delivered. She was delivered of so much hurt. My first experience <laughs> to go with my daughters. All my daughters, not one was missing. <laughs> Sister said, you know, Mom, she's not Beth. She's Elizabeth. Like John the Baptist. You were born, Tomas Augustine, for a purpose. Just like she was born for a purpose. For the man of God that was supposed to be born. That's why the enemy has tried to keep her down and it kept you down because God has a plan. Amen. Don't forget, she is special just like you. And all of you ladies are special. Amen. God has a plan for each one of your kids. And you and you all got to stop sitting around with put you faces. Okay. <laughs> That's not what God created you for, okay? Okay, I'm serious. You all got a purpose. You're not here just to sit on that bench and keep it warm, okay? You ladies, come and tell what God did to you. Even if you're ashamed, you need to let them know, because what does the word say? Okay? Come on, Lord, help me. It's the word of your testimony, right? It's the word of your testimony. So you need to come share it, all right?
Don't be ashamed. Let them see what happened. How the spirit, how he overwhelmed that place. He set it on fire. Sister Gina. I'm Sister Gina. <laughs> um, so on Mother's Day, I found out we're not going to have the men at the mountain, and it was just going to be the women. You know, we're used to the drums and the guitar. And I found out we had a little box little drum box, and I said, I can beat that drum, you know, so I took it, and I had it, and I left it on Thursday at my house. The Holy Spirit told me, tell my husband to drop the drum off at Brother Enrique's house, because he's coming up to the mountain, so I did, and it got there, and I've never played the drums in my life, but um, I pray to God that he used me. I was set free and I was delivered. And the Holy Spirit used me because the Holy Spirit was the one that beat that drum, that stayed on that rhythm, that was not me. And if we're willing and able, if we're willing, the Lord is going to make us able. Doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what you did before, the Lord is going to use you if you are willing. And um, the stones, I didn't drop mine on the first night. There was something, you know, in me still. Um, and I dropped my stone. And I was, you know, I received. But as I'm there, it's still altar call. And I'm like, okay, there's still something. Because there's still, I still need to let go of some stuff. So I had to go back. had to stand over there. had to speak with God. Dig within myself. And I had to grab three more stones. And I had to go up there and I had to put them in that well. And when I did that, I was just, it was like an explosion, just complete change. If you're willing, you say yes to God, he's going to give you everything you need. Thank you. So we're getting ready to go to the mountain. I didn't, Bobby Joe kept asking me if I was leaving Thursday or Friday. I kept giving her the runaround because I wasn't sure. And I wasn't doing my part, really finding anybody to watch her. So finally, I was just like, you know what? I, I have nothing to, like, I have to go up there. So I have no reason not to. So I called my dad. I'm talking to him. I didn't know my grandma was in Mexico. I'm trying to call her. I'm thinking something happened to her. And I go home. I think it was that Wednesday. And I asked my mom, like, does she know what's going on? And she's like, oh, yeah, she's in Mexico. I'm like, wow, I called this lady all day at different times because she's, like, the only person I'm willing to trust with privacy. And it doesn't work out. So I call my dad, and I'm like, hey, this is the weekend of the mountain. Should I call my Aunt Mary? And my dad's like, no, I got her. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, call your grandma. She's home. I'm like, no, she's not. I've been calling her. So I call her, and they had, he had already talked to her. So that's my first little testimony. God made that way for me. I had the privilege of picking up Isis to ride with me up the mountain. And she doesn't know this, but talking to her in the car really, like, made me open up about being more comfortable going because towards the end I found out that they were going to split up me, my mom, and Alyssa. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not comfortable with these people like that to sleep with them like in a vulnerable state. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to be around that. Um, 
I do talk to everybody, I say hi, but I'm, I don't really go past that. So Saturday night, Arlene and Serena brought up pizza. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that day we went through morning service and when we had our break, everybody had plans to go zip lining and doing stuff and I was all for it, but I just, some, I wasn't feeling it, I was really tired. So I went and I laid down and everybody left. I ended up sleeping the whole break. <laughs> and when I got up, I went with Arlena and Serena and they were like, oh yeah, we're gonna get food because they didn't eat either. So I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to the little hall after the break, um, right before the evening service and we go through service, okay, get my little revelation, and we go, service is over. <laughs> We're still talking about pizza, come to find out. Domino's closed early that night, so we end up taking a car ride. The car ride's about 25, 30 minutes down the mountain. God made a way for me to open up with somebody else to where I was able to share a story and reach out to Serena and Arlena. So my rock was to be more vulnerable and not hold back and be able to really share my whole self with somebody and not feel like I'm gonna be ridiculed or judged. So thank you, Isis. Thank you, Arlena and Serena. I had the privilege of sharing my testimony um, earlier today, so some of those things are just between me and the ladies. Um, new sisters that I have found, you know. Um, first, thanks Sister Bobby for insisting that I go on this conference. You know, as being a new person at this church, it's a little intimidating to go with a group of women that you really don't know, right? And. <laughs> And thank you to Sister Conce, we shared a room, we shared a bed, and you know, at first I'm like, I never really talked to her, I don't, you know, besides hi and bye, and, but she was very welcoming, I got to, you know, meet her and get to know her a little bit better, and, and that was awesome, and that was great. Um, so Friday night, originally I was planning to head up there with everybody, but then it turned out it was Max's prom. Right? And although I don't have daughters, I only have boys, I still want to be there with them, help them put that suit on, help them comb their hair, you know. Even though they're boys, you know, they're mama's boys, right? And so, so I let Sister Bobby know I won't be going up there till, you know, either really late Friday night or I'm going up there Saturday morning. Um, the enemy tried to impede me from going. You know, Max came home pretty late Friday night. We, you know, between asking him how to go, how was everything, you, you know, decompressing and going to bed. We didn't go to bed till about maybe one in the morning. We were gonna be picking up Cherish early in the morning and making the drive up to the mountain. And so the enemy was telling me, why are you going now? It's late, you're tired, you didn't really sleep much. You already missed out on Friday night, why are you going? You know, and so that struggle was within me of, do I go, do I not go, do I go, do I not go? You know, I was vulnerable too, because like I said, I don't know all these women that I'm going up there, you know, to have this fellowship with. And so I pressed on, woke up early for something, told Eric, I gotta get in the shower, gotta get in the shower. And he's like, we gotta go pick up Cherish, we're gonna be late, we told her we're gonna pick her up at this time. And I'm like, I don't care, I gotta take a shower. Because I felt like, that was God telling me, wake up and go. You know, don't listen to that voice in your head that's telling you, don't go. And so, you know, I, I went up there expecting, like Sister said, revival. You know, I've been carrying this baggage for years. I've been praying, God, do a miracle in my household. Do a miracle in my family. 
20 years of prayer, God answers prayers. God answered my prayer that I've been praying for 20 years in my household, in my family. And that weekend, I missed out on Friday, so I didn't know about the stone, but Sister Lizette shared with me about the stone. And she's like, make sure you get your stone, make sure you get your stone. So I go to the basket, and I'm like, well, does it really matter which stone do I get, right? And so I looked for one that kind of was smooth on one side, but also kind of had little holes on another, a little rough on one edge. And I said, you know, I feel like this stone is all the baggage that I've been carrying the hurt, the unforgiveness, all of it, the resentment. And so as service went on on Saturday, there was the three sessions. I had the stone in my pocket, and I said, it's not time. It's not time. It's, God hasn't put it in your heart yet to go to that well and throw your stone in there. And Sister Venetia prayed for me, and I just let it out. I cried and cried, and she said, Say hallelujah, say hallelujah, say it faster, say it faster, say it faster. The spirit is working within you. She's like, do you speak in tongues? I said, I don't. She's like, just keep saying hallelujah with me and say it faster and say it faster. The spirit is finding your language for you. I can hear it. I can hear it as you're speaking. I hear it. And I knew that was God telling me, let go, forgive, let it all go. Your prayers are answered. You need to let go. You want to be a better wife. You want to be a better mother. You want to make amends for the stuff that you've put your boys through. And so at the end of that, the last service, I went up there and I threw my my rock in the well. And I knew God had done something within me. I knew that I wanted to be happy again. I was tired of carrying the bitterness. And I knew God touched me that night. And I knew that. It was all worth it. When the enemy said, don't go, God's had other bigger plans for me out there. So I just want to say, believe in prayer. God doesn't always answer on our timing. It's his timing. Don't give up because I was ready to throw in the towel. I was ready to say, God, I'm done praying. 20 years is a lot of years to pray for something, God. But then I was in that room with the women, and Sister Olivia was talking to me. We were upstairs in the dining room, and she asked me, like, how's everything, mija? And I opened up, and I shared with her, and she was like, I know exactly what you're going through. I've been there. And to hear, you know, someone else tell you that they know how you feel and what you're going through was awesome. Sister Olivia, you don't know how much your words that night meant to me, that I wasn't alone, that I found these women that knew exactly how I felt and had gone through what I had been through, and they're still standing. It was just the whole experience for me was great, and it was awesome. Hi, everyone. (laughs) Um, Two weeks ago, me and Bobby went on a long drive, a long drive. And she said, what are you expecting? And I didn't know what the theme was. I told her, I want a new heart. I want to see people the way the Lord sees them. I want to hear them the way the Lord hears them. That's all I want. I get there. I hear the theme. Friday, some things are coming off. I had one of the ministers pray, Celia, and the power of confession, the power of confession. There's times where we tell the Lord, forgive me, Lord, for my sins. Do we confess everything? I learned that there was a shame on me. There was shame. I couldn't say it. So when she's telling me, tell the Lord this, tell, as I'm saying it, it's falling. It was falling. It was falling. But it was the confession. It wasn't just, Lord, forgive me of my sins. It was, Lord, forgive me for this. Lord, forgive. I had to be specific. And I had to dig out the root that was in there. That was one. So I thought I was done, right? 
I thought I was done. Then there was another word. You can't leave here the same. You can't leave here without letting something else go. There's been division in my family for a long time. I had the privilege of gathering my sisters, and we got a breakthrough. We got a breakthrough. We received prayer. I don't think we've ever gotten prayer in the same room before. I don't think we've ever had that. So that was, um, yeah. Hello. <laughs> so um, when I first got there, like Friday night, like that was my breakthrough. Like the Lord had me on the floor. My, my face was to the ground. I was laid flat out. Uh, I was just in tears, you know. Um, for some of you that know, like, you know, I've been struggling with my mom and our relationship. And, um, you know, um, the Lord has just been working in me. He's been changing my heart. And um, I was trying to change hers. And it, it's not for me to change hers. And like Sister Valerie told me, the Lord's working in you. So you just love your mom for who she is. And, um, you know, it was like a big weight off of me. It was just like it hit me, like it finally got to me that I don't want to love her from a distance. Like, you know, I don't want to love her from a distance. It was just eating away at me because... The way she left is just so hurtful and painful. <laughs> and um, it was just a big weight off of me. It was just, you know, I just released it. Yeah. I released it. And, um, you know, I know I need to love my mom. I ask God for forgiveness for the way I, I, I've been treating her and the way I've treated her in the past. And... You know, and um, it, it was just tough. It's just tough. You know, I love my mom. I, I do. I love my mom. You know, I want God to change her heart. And like Sister Valerie told me, I just got to keep praying for that, praying for my mom. But the other side I have a lot of sisters here that I got to know man we talked all night we ate ice cream we stayed up and ate ice cream um, um, everybody knows I like snacks <laughs> So I'm just so thankful, you know, for, for this church. I'm thankful for Pastor Angel, for Sister Bobby, all, all my sisters here. I just, you know, it opened my eyes. Like, we can't judge people, you know, by the book, by what you hear from others. And, and you know, I just, I got to know some sisters, you know. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful for that because, you know, it opened my eyes. You know that you, you, we can't be like that. We we have to love one another, and and we have to be there for one another. We all go through something, you know. We we're all going through something, and, and um, it, it doesn't help if 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 we're hating on one another. And we just need to love one another and just be there for each other. And I love you all. You guys are all my sisters. And if you ever need me, I'm here.
Okay, it's my turn. <laughs> okay, so I'm not one to come up and speak. That's not my thing. I like being back there on the behind the microphone, <laughs> worshiping. Yeah. But um, I went to that mountain about maybe 10 years ago, but my heart wasn't open. You know, us sisters went and played some conquian, some poker, <laughs> instead of going to the service, you know. So, but this time I said, no, I'm going to go and I'm going to open up my heart and I'm going to be there to worship because that is what I love doing, worshiping my God. And I just thank God that we have Sister Stephanie. I, th I thank God for all the women who went to help us and organize this thing, for us to be there and get together, for the men who took everything out there and who were watching over us. I thank God for you guys. And I can't wait to go there next year again, because I know where it's, it's going to happen again. Okay? I thank Sister Bobby. Um, my thing on my rock was fear, to get up and speak in front of everyone. And today I accomplished that. Thank you. So, it's easy to sing now, but it's harder to speak. <laughs> so, I made every excuse not to go to the mountain. I even tried to find a new job. Even arguing with my husband as an excuse not to go to the mountain or the kids, <laughs> they can't be without mommy, you know? But I can say I'm glad I went. And for me, um, I guess it was like a spirit like of oppression. <laughs> of all the negative words spoken over me. I'm still getting to know myself and who I am in Christ and where he wants to take me. And I'm trying to walk in obedience in my marriage and as a mother in the ministry. And before I went, I had um, read like a chapter of a book and it was talking about honor. So like, I guess um, I, wanted, I went with the goal and the mindset to honor others, to be obedient, to be humble and to be loved. And I feel like I accomplished that and we did a lot of worship. <laughs> and I... I like, I was watching people get prayed for and I was just playing and I was like, oh, it's cool if I don't get prayed for, like I'm good, I'm solid. And then I, I don't know if it was Sister Desiree, where is she? <laughs> but after like one of the worship sessions, I think it was like the noon sh session, like Sister Celia came up to me and was like, do you want prayer? And I was like, oh, I need a breath mint and all this. She's like, you're not praying, we're praying. And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> let's see where this goes. So uh, they laid um, her and the other sisters. I'm not sure who all was praying. I believe it was all, all the women. Like they just started praying over me and like, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna just receive. I'm not gonna speak in tongues. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm going to just shut up and receive. So that's what I did. And then all of a sudden I became weak. And then I just like fell forward on the ground. And then I was just laying there and like they were just praying in the spirit. And they were just like taking off the negative everything that was just spoken over me. And I just, just began to weep, 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 weep. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I couldn't even breathe. Like I was, you know how you get all snotty? 
<laughs> I couldn't breathe out my nose anymore. It was only my mouth. So, like, I was trying to get up, and I was just like, I can't even move. But eventually, like, I got up, and then um, before we came, I actually, sorry, I'm going over. I, I had a dream that I was um, paired with Sister, like, I was in her, I didn't know what the cabins looked like, but there were steps. And I saw Sister Margarita, I saw Sister Bobby, I also saw Sister Desiree. Me and Sister Desiree had some healing. So I just thought that was like cool. That was like confirmation. And then I was like, oh, I don't wanna go because I don't wanna go. <laughs> but I'm glad that I went and I just praise God, you know, for healing and then just for bonding us women together. And I love you guys. Okay, bye. My name is Desiree. Um, so a week before I went up there, um, I was already being prepped. God was already showing me some things. Sometimes we walk around and um, we begin to put layers over our hearts. We begin to tell God, we begin to tell people. People ask, are you okay? I'm good. I'm fine. I'm worshiping and I worship up there because I worship for the Lord, for what he's done in my life. Not for nobody else, not for what has hindered my heart, but I go for the Lord. So at times I'm always saying, I'm good, I'm good. But the day before we went up, we came to church, and there's very, very few here. And I sat at the altar with my husband, and the Lord began to just prep my heart. That I had a still heart that I didn't even recognize. And I went to work the next morning, and I started feeling a certain way. And I said, I don't know why I feel like this. But I woke up with the song on my heart, and it was, um, I want to be different. I want to be changed. And I had texted my husband to talk to him how I felt because I needed to let some things out before I went up to the mountains. I had texted Pastor Good Morning to tell him the song that was placed on my heart. You know, there were some words exchanged, and I just wanted to I knew what I went up there to expect something. And when I got up there, I didn't know what the message was. And they gave us that rock. And my rock was big, really high. And I said, wow, this is the layers that are on my heart that I needed to lay down. And I looked at my sister the first night and said, I'm not ready to give this rock up. Because I knew God had to get deep, deep in there. The first night I got up there, I was already I already had broke. God had just begun to take things off, take things off. And it was just all God's plan because I became an, al an alternate to worship that I was able to be at the altar. And uh, the second day, it was just again, I was just weeping and weeping. It's like, okay, Lord, is there any more? What else? Take it all. Take it all. And um, Saturday, we were able to, I was able to put that rock in the well. And um, I was having a knee issue. And I believe the Lord told me this morning that my knee was being healed because of all the weight that I was carrying up here was weighing me down and was bringing weight to my knee. And I just want to say that to my children and to my husband for just shutting them up all the time because I was walking in a spirit of offense towards my own family because things were spoken over me and I would just shove it down and shove it down and when they would begin to speak to me, I felt an offense all the time. But I just wanna tell them that I love them and I love my husband and I'm coming back, I'm, I'm back and I'm changed and I brought the mountaintop back with me. <laughs> hard getting up talking to people I even took a class in college and it didn't help <laughs> so 
Like I told the women, I was pitching them all in their bras and their underwears while I'm pitching you guys like wearing weird things and that so you guys just don't like look at me, okay? But um, so anyway, um, I'm new to this church and I asked my cousin Prima, my Prima, my, my, I mean my cousin Margaret, hey, what church are you going to? Because I lost my mom two years ago. And I don't know if you guys, some of you are probably my age, so you know Rick James, you know, cold as ice. Well, that's what this heart has been since I lost my mom. Because nobody can replace your mom. But my mom told me she gave me a group of new sisters there where the sisters that got up, and one of them wanted to go and touch her because she was like laughing, like, what is she drinking or smoking or what has she got over there? Because I need that. I wanted to go touch her and I go, I know she's not doing nothing bad up here because this is like a Bible retreat. Yeah. Then we even went on a boat and they gave us like a wine glass and I go, we were going to like just play a joke on them and put the wine glasses out there. I go, they're going to kick us out. And then I'm like, then I got to drive up there with Sister Nana's, and Sister Nana's can jam. She like goes up that hill. But I go, God gave us fog, so he, she had to go slow. So I was like, okay, I made it. Then my husband got, wasn't feeling good. Like he's walking around his knee. But the kids are like, how are you going to leave dad? I go, there's five of you. You guys could take care of dad. So the devil is, and then the finances. But then Sister Nana's like, Bobby will take payments. I'm like, okay, we're, we're going. And I told my husband, you mind? My husband's like, no, go. So the devil just kept putting obstacle, obstacle. Then I got that little rock. And I said, this little rock? Women, you saw that big boulder? That's what I left up there. Because... <laughs> I had a lot, but God gave me now the strength and the courage to get up here and do this. So now I'm gonna probably buy me a microphone and be walking around like all like, you know. And I was even like struggling with one of my neighbors. And today I came out and I said, if she comes outside, I'm gonna say hi or God bless you because I'm not gonna let the devil rob me of what's here. So, but. If you didn't go this year, I pray that we're all going to go next year. And it will be a, a life experience. Because when we came home, my, my, I went up there with Sister Nana's. I came back down with my prima. And just the, the conversations and the meeting and the, the women making me feel so welcome. And I just saw miracle after miracle. I mean, God was there. And that boulder, like, I left it there. So, like, when I go back, it's like, because it was a lot. Because I go, those little rocks... I took like three or four, and I go, if somebody sees me, I'm like, no, that boulder's staying here. And like my mom said, Miha, I'm okay. So, but just the honesty and the prayers and the testimonies. I went up to the, to the hill, mountain like 22 years ago. But at that time, like I had one foot here and one foot there. And I wasn't completely right. I would go to church, but my heart wasn't. But I, I did have um, a heart transplant. Because I came back with a different heart than when I went up there. Away from my husband because he wanted to hear it. Where is he? He's in the back. Okay, you're right. Okay, the Lord was speaking to me fast after Sister Margarita spoke. So, this is what he said Daughter, rise up for I know the plans for you. You know your purpose now. Forgiveness, because forgiveness comes from me. And for me through you. Be set free just like the beautiful butterfly that you've been transformed into. For I can only use a pure heart. When you fall, I've always picked you up. So now it's time. Time to fly with those beautiful colors that I've given you. Don't forget what I've shown you up here. Up on this mountain where you drew near to me. And I drew near to you. Wait. 
But I just wanted to remind all of you sisters, don't forget sisterhood. Okay? Don't forget. We're stronger together. No matter what we do, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're not perfect. Okay? But God created us in his image. So let's start by encouraging each other, calling each other. Who cares if they don't come around? Who cares? Just keep going and going and going. Keep praying. Keep standing. And just keep talking to each other. I mean, it was so fun over there. Everybody coming together, I really felt like I had more than two, three sisters. Yeah, I have three. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I got to know a lot of you. I'm like, Serena was one of them. She's funny. I didn't know how funny she was. So I just want to tell you guys, please don't forget sisterhood. Desiree, Jasmine, don't forget. Sisterhood, okay? My nieces, Ariana, Ariana, I love you guys. Lisette, I love you. Imores, I love you. All right? That's it. No one else wants to come down and share? No more sisters? <laughs> no, she's... Okay. Okay, come on. Anybody else? Woo! <laughs> My, mine is quicker than all of these. Because I had my encounter, I can't even tell you what day was what. I got to see the Holy Spirit come in, coming over the whole place. When we showed up, it showed up. When we went to lunch, it cleared up. When we came back, it showed up again. It showed up where it was so tangible, you can feel it. The next time I saw that, I saw it over the lake that unfortunately the men don't get to see. There was water in it. I actually saw it roll in, in a circle over the water. I told Sister Stella, I'm like, look, it's going in a circle over the water. I talked to her, and as I finished talking to her, it was trying to go away. And I said, no, I welcome you into this place. Come back. And it en encountered us all over again. So. Ladies that missed it, bad on you. I go, every year that we've had some kind of women get away, I've been disappointed in a lot of you that didn't make the effort. You gotta make the effort, because it is life changing. <laughs> Okay, I think everybody's wrapped up. Oh no, here's Sister Margaret. You know, as my cousin said, we are new. So, I mean, we're, we're really still wet behind, the, not just the ears, the whole head, okay? Uh, we start coming at the end of March end of March. So, you know, I really want to encourage you, the ladies that have been coming a long time. It's a life experience changing, permanently changing, that you do go lay it down all at the altar, learn to use those tools and resources that are being provided. You know, um, like I said, I've only been with Christians like four years, you know, changing that. I was Catholic before. So I never went with my other church over there. So this was my first experience, and it was it was enjoying. I, I met a lot of beautiful sisters, very open. You know, it's it's not a negative thing, and it's okay to open up. It's okay. It's okay. That's how healing starts, you know. And I'm looking forward to this week's class with the healing and deliverance, and I encourage you guys to use that too because you got to move forward. And if you leave it all behind, you can't go forward. So 
you know, I welcome you guys. I'm glad you guys are very welcoming. And like I told the ladies at the at the mountain that, you know, I, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. And um, everybody went around very pleasant, you know, I, no bad experience. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. No, I'm saying don't be afraid because people say, oh, I don't know anybody. I don't know how to sleep. I told, I met Linda. I told her I was going to tell you that I had to bring a new sister in because she hadn't been. But I told her, okay, now you're my, I said, my Sally, because, you know, we're doing life together now. We're doing life together. Yeah. We're doing life together as sisters. And that's not just this life. That's everlasting life. Okay? And so I see all you guys as the same, you know, and I, I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you. I got to know uh, Linda and Cynthia more personal, more intimate because we were there. But it, it was pleasant. It was enjoyable, you know. So I'm looking to forward to, you know, also encountering more personal relationship with all you guys. Thank you, Ivory, for having my pumpkin pie ready. <laughs> <laughs> you made enough. <laughs> but uh, like I said, don't be afraid to step out of your shell, you know. And um, you're not alone. You're not. You always got Jesus, and once you know you got Jesus on your back, you know, who, who can hold you back? Nobody can hold you back. That's why when you see me, I walk forward because nobody's going to pull me back, you know. So thank you, and um, it, it was a pleasure, you know, seeing all you guys there and also sharing your experience and seeing that there's no... That's so much joy that you could see, you know, that deliverance, that deliverance. You know, but until next time, until Wednesday. Okay, it's my turn. A, B, C. <laughs> A, I went to the mountain. B, I planned the mountain with Sister Margarita and Sister Sandra. But it was a great, this was a year of training, a year of growing, a, a year of dying to yourself, a year of God pouring into us and giving us um, the vision for this conference. This was the first conference for Turning Point Fellowship. And we thank God for that. When I came here five years ago, I was lost. But Turning Point, and it was in our message, Turning point, we're turning around. And God turned me around and pointed me towards more towards him than ever before. And I'm grateful that God called me to be in this ministry. And I'm grateful for Pastor Angel that he trusted me to take you women to the mountain to lead that conference. And I went up there with fears and trembling. <laughs> when you're the head, you're the head. <laughs> And the head gets chopped first. <laughs> but I growed a lot. I repented a lot. I humbled myself and apologized to lots of women this year. You know what? You're getting to know me, and I'm getting to know you. Amen. And you know what? Like I said, this was our first time. This was quite an experience. We, we made some mistakes. We corrected mistakes. But you know what? We grew. We grew. We grew as women of God. We grew. We trust each other now more today than we did last week, right? But God's been preparing us for that mountain, ladies. And when I first came here, Sister Alice and Sister Emma, they said, we've been praying for you. We've been waiting for you to come. I go, who am I? You've been waiting for me. They said, yes, you're the one. You're the one that says it's going to lead us. And I go, not me. But I said, yes, God. And I said, yes to Pastor, because Pastor says, can you give a message? I said, yes, I can give a message. So he goes, okay, I want you to give a message. But I knew when he said that, I knew I was going to be a part of the women's ministry. I did not know that I was going to be the head of the women's ministry. I miss hospitality. <laughs> I'm Martha. 
My name is Bobby Jill Martha. <laughs> it has been Bobby Jill Martha for 45 years. <laughs> and I'm Esther. <laughs> Pastor calls me Esther. He goes, for such a time as this, for me, amen. And he goes, I want you to ask God to give you a heart of compassion. And I want you to love these women. And God did that. He gave me a love of compassion, and I love each and every one. Since the day I first spoke in July, five years ago, it's coming up. It'll be five years in July. I have loved you women. I have prayed for you women. I fought with you women. <laughs> I've learned a lot. I hope you trust me as much as I've trusted you. And I know when I went on that mountain before on last weekend, they said, God's going to use you to minister to women. He's going to use you to mentor women. I go, well, I, I think that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> they didn't know who I was. They didn't know who I am. But they said that I would prophesy and give the word of the Lord, and I would be a teacher. So I know God's going to use me more in teaching, and I'll flow more fluently. And I did. At the mountain, I, everybody said how much I flowed in the spirit, and it was beautiful. But one of my biggest fears is I'm afraid to ride motorcycles. So that's why we don't own a motorcycle. <laughs> we sold our motorcycle right after we came to Turning Point. <laughs> but anyway, it's not about motorcycles. It's about Jesus. Amen. So Sister Sandra, she goes, Bobby, what are you going to do on the break? I said, oh, I don't know. I think I'm just going to go rest. Well, I was in the potty, and the Lord said, you're going to go out there, and you're going to walk out there, and you're going to do that zip line. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid of heights, but not afraid of heights. I know how to climb on ships. I know how to climb on tugboats. So I was able to go right up that ladder. <laughs> and when I got to the top, First, it took me a while to get on, but I said, all right. He kept cheering me on. I go, oh, boy, I don't know. I don't know if this is where I'm going to die today. <laughs> so I got all geared up, climbed up there like a champ. When you get up there and you look down, you know, you're looking, you know you're going to go over there. And the girl goes, just take your time, take your time. Take your time. And I go, if I don't do it, I'm not going to do it. And then I backed up. I go, no, I can't. Because I've jumped off of Ferris wheels. I've jumped off of ski lifts. I don't like movement. I don't like rides. I do not like rides. I don't like to go to amusement parks. But you know what? I said, I, I know that I heard God's voice. You know when you know that you know you hear God's voice? Just like I knew that I knew I knew that Stephanie was supposed to come and worship at the mountain. That's what happened up there. I knew that God told me you're going to do that zip line. So I said, all right, God, I'm going to, leap. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to, I, it's going to be faith. Faith is going to get me off of this platform. And I did it. I did it. That was a big victory for my life because I don't do those kind of things. But I, I wanted to face that fear. And I wanted to know that I went to that mountain to get rid of all that fear that intimidation, the stuff that says, you can't do it. You're not good enough to do it. You're not educated to do it. You're not trained to do it. But you know what? God says I can do it. And when I did the message for Mother's Day, God said, I will equip you. <laughs> to teach the word I equipped you to do what I called you to do. So I know God's equipping me, and I know I'm learning. But you know what? We're all learning together. But the Holy Spirit is the greatest teacher in the world. And I give him glory. I just praise God. I can't wait. I did have a vision during this year. 
that in 20 years when we were having our 20th anniversary, I'm going to be alive to celebrate that 20th anniversary. And I'm believing for that. I'm going to believe I'm going to live a long, long life, and I'm going to live, live to serve God all the days of my life. No matter how many years that is, I'm going to serve the Lord, and I just thank God for it. Thank you, Pastor, that we did get to have this conference. This, this conference has been pregnant with the seed for five years. And you know what? It took five years to birth this conference. But we birthed it. We birthed it. We labored. We prayed and we labored for this conference for you women. And but Pastor, we forgot to tell you. You know, you have to book in it. You're in advance. We forgot to call you because it was too late on Friday, Saturday night and too early on Sunday morning. But my husband did it. <laughs> so it's up to the pastor if we get to go again. But I hope we get to go again. It's over. <laughs> Take a hint. because of your obedience. The women went to the mountain. Been praying for a leader for the women, and uh, she came and uh, she started. She started with you ladies for about the first six months, and she says, "I don't think they like me." <laughs> and uh, and some of you ladies were complaining too, you know. Oh, I don't know. She's got us the way we do things and this and that. I said, "We do things God's way. We don't do things culturally." In our culture, we do things God's culture, amen. right? And look what happened. Amen. You guys, amen. amen. <laughs> All you got to do is give someone an opportunity, amen. you know, with an open heart. And, and God will use them, you know, but you got you to gotta allow that. You guys, you ladies have allowed that. Yes. You guys have blossomed into the butterflies, amen. Amen. You're butterflies, you're no longer caterpillars, little hairy, ugly worms. You guys, you guys are beautiful butterflies now. So uh, I just want to say thank you for participating. Thank you for being part of Turning Point Fellowship and what God is doing. God has greater things for every one of you. Imagine if every one of you invited someone new. Just one of you invited somebody new, you would double the, the, the camp next year. 
So think about that, you know, pray about that and uh, pray for somebody and pay for somebody, you know. Throughout the week, throughout the year, you can pay, you know, $10 for conference, $5 for conference, $20 for conference. Throughout the year, by the end of the year, you have two people and you say, I want to sponsor someone, Amen. you know. And when you invite someone, you say, it's already paid for. Come on out, you know, and enjoy it. Uh, it was a blessing to uh, hear all the testimonies, what God has done and what he's doing. I know some of you ladies uh, probably wanted to come up, but we ran out of time. You know, time's always a factor. So uh, we're going to pray. We're going to let Bobby pray. Yeah, go ahead and hold hands, everyone. Come on, Bobby. Come on up here with Andy. Bring your husband over here. He'll follow you wherever you go. You know? <laughs> Amen. We're just going to believe God. All right? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. 